my name is Michael Wise and my professional name is Dr. Michael Wise. I'll just give you a brief uh, history of my work. I, I'm moving into my mid-60s now, but as, as a mid-teen I, I went to art school as a 15-year-old. Um, met my artist wife there as a, and I studied graphic design. I also studied painting and sculpture at the time and over time I, I moved into the fine arts and the visual arts where I painted and sculpt, sculpted and I used to do large object sculptures um, and then when I went off to university in my early 30s I, I moved into installation art and experimental art and doing experimental light shows and sound works. Um, after university my work kept moving into that area and I had the opportunity to represent Western Australia through ArtSource for the Gunnery um, Artists in Residence in Sydney which I developed a sound work for that and then like life can intervene with different things going on and yeah I, I just kept exhibiting um, in Perth from the, at the West Australian Art Gallery and Perth Institute of Contemporary Art and, and the Fremantle Art Centre but in recent times my focus has been on where I live in Margaret River where I've lived since 1985. The work I have on exhibition now encapsulates um, all my early beginnings as a designer, sculptor, painter and videographer and photographer. I wouldn't say I'm a photographer but I've always used the photographic process in my work from day one till now and now it's become part of the process and so I've been very fortunate um, a few years ago I was curated into an exhibition for the Bunbury Biennale and my career because of different things going on in my life was flatlining a bit and, and the, they gave me six months to develop a new idea. So within three or four months this new idea came along where I was, I was painting um, painting, creating these little figurative sculptures um, and then the sculptures I photographed and I learned how to montage them into digital landscapes and it, and it just took off. But the, the ideas that underpinned all these works was that I was looking at a landscape, uh, a beautiful uh, coastal landscape that had all these underlying dark secrets or I call it the coast, coastal gothic and so um, a lot of my artworks I developed had these dark undertones and when I started painting these figures in the coastal landscape they were usually standing close to it under a cliff overhang and, and I suppose that translates back to history in 1996 when the Gracetown cliff collapsed on a, on a um, two schools having a surfing competition, the Margaret River and Quaramup School and uh, nine people perished including parents, principal and students and what that demonstrated to me in researching this coastal gothic was we always felt that when we go into the ocean beneath the surface of the water there was all these underlying dangers and the beach was paramount for safety and here all these people were in a safe location in a little cave out of the wind and rain and it collapsed and it, and it made me realise maybe the beach is not safe anymore so I've had this underlying theme running through my work um, and that's where the figures evolved from. Now going into this work I could emerging from the cloud it's um, I started photographing uh, people down the beach in wetsuits 
young people, male and female, all, people of all ages, because I found the, the most surfing people, whether they're male or female, had similar figures. You know, the women had bigger shoulders because they were surfing, and so the men, and, and most of them, are, you know, most, most had similar shapes. So I found the figures were more gender neutral. And the moment uh, people put on wetsuits, they became animal-like. They, they, they put in a second skin and they moved out into the ocean like seals and so forth. So the early stages of, of this work, I was, I was treating people like the moment they adorned a wetsuit, they became these animals that interacted together beyond the shoreline. So, um, so I, I developed probably 70, fig 70 figures and for this one I, I went through my collection and I, and I tried, I, I really loved this, this landscape, this brooding landscape with the way the loud cloud was reflecting onto the, onto the sand and I tried several figures and none of them worked and then I just found this figure and I don't even don't know how I do it because I don't use Photoshop and it just slid into the cloud and I just went oh my god I, you know it, you know sometimes you can work for months on something to get it to work this happened in about 10 minutes so I immediately knew um, and previously all my figures were set back into the landscape. They were just sort of like these figures, like ghost-like figures that sat back. But on this occasion, the figure dominated. And I realised, I did this at the end of last year, um, just before we had to submit our uh, submissions for the, the art award. And, um, and I, and I, and I realised and I called it emerging from the cloud and I just had this optimism that it was an underlying feeling or thought that hopefully that humanity is going to emerge from this cloud that's hovering over the world at the moment. And, and I didn't make, and then I made the sculpture, uh, I placed it inside the dome and, you know, and that spoke about people being locked away and everything, and so it was. It wasn't something I did on purpose. Um, it was just something that just came from within. And I, so I feel like I've created an artwork that's looked at my present history um, without making it doing it a contrived idea. So, does anyone? Want to, I can, I can talk about how I make the figures, the process. Um, originally, being a former sculptor who had left sculpture behind, um, I, I, I researched uh, a women's crafting technique called paper doll making, and that's got a history of in Asia about 700 years, and in European terms about 300. And when I went back, it was the French who were making these little paper dolls called papin. And they were uh, they are making characters of, of of aristocracy and making fun of them, and and they were they were very playful. And then not long after that, they translated into um, paper doll books in 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 London in about 1810, and they were a moral story. And the paper doll books was about little Fanny who ran away from her wealthy home and because she didn't want to wear what a parent, a mother told her to wear. So in the book it shows, and she becomes impoverished and it shows how she works herself back through society and every time she, she moves up a level she got a new, new clothing that they can tab on. So, um, and paper do doll books are still uh, being published today. Um, and so I used, re I'd photograph these people down the beach and I'd print them out sort of A4 size 
and I'd use those as templates, like or uh, fashion design templates, and I'd roll out sheets of recycled aluminium, and I'd heat treat them with a. You can see the colours. That's me using masking tape, and there's different chemicals in masking tape. So when I use a hot flame on it, different colour reactions, you know, evolve from that. Um, so I basically burn them and then I make two sides and then I tab them together. But inside is, is an arm, a wire armature, so they're made exactly like I used to make my bigger sculptures. And, uh, and then, um, so I had a lot of success making those and then I taught myself how to um, montage them into digital imagery. So, uh, but yeah, so it, it's, and also uh, some of the works uh, I superimpose into video works. So my next stage of technical learning is uh, pinpoint animation, which I want to teach myself in the next 12 months or so. So um, if I have a figure in a photo or a moving photo or or a video, there might be just a gesture, you know, like the figure just has subtle gestures. And also some of the figures that I've made have become characters in my creative writing. Um, last year's piece that I had in this art award, Rob Monster, he, he sitting on my wall at home and he, he, he says, okay, Michael, when are you gonna finish this story? You know, I look at it, I go, yes, I'm doing my art practice. I can't write and do my art practice at the same time. So I've had to put my writing on hold, but this year I feel I have time to write that story. So if anyone's got any information, I mean, any questions, quite welcome. Well, you just thought to write because you're talking about the darkness, but there's still that light, you know, and it's nice because it's, it's again, it's that yin and yang, you know, so that you still use that open possibility yeah. Like he leaves that doubt and possibilities, so I like that. Yeah, I, I try and be a little bit ambiguous so you can interpret it both ways. Yes. Yeah. But there's just really not And the thing is, um, as you well know, Martin, when you take a photograph, whether you've got your phone or your good camera equipment, um, when you see something start to evolve in front of your eyes, you've, you've got to capture it there and then, so you've just got to use what's, what, what, what's, what, what you've got in your yeah. car or your hand, so mm -hmm. that's how, that was just a chance moment. That's it. Yeah. So that sculpture there, Mum, is the same figure that you've got in the photo? Yes, yeah, so uh, I, I, I set up the photograph, uh, set up the sculpture at home, um, I photograph it, uh, and then I, 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 I place it into um, an app, a photographic app that's very simple, it's not Photoshop, but it allows me to uh, cut the background out, take the background away, and, uh, and it allows me to uh, just um, superimpose it in, into it, bring it into the yeah, so it's not a sophisticated application. Yeah, well, this is the first time I've technically, some of the other figures, they, they sat over the cloud. Yeah. And for some reason, and I, I still don't know whether it was the quality of whatever it is, it just. Yeah. It's just meant to be. <laughs> and I, I still don't know how I did it. <laughs> and I'm very honest about that. So they, they talk about artists having creative accidents, mm. but, but I don't believe they're accidents. You know, there's, there's been two or three years worth of research lying behind that before that accident happened. Mm. So even though it, I really enjoyed it uh, to happen, yeah, yeah, you, you, there's usually a, quite a few hours of work lying behind that. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you have to know the same thing in photography and painting and ceramics or whatever. The you know things will just 
happen and you go, yes! <laughs> thank you, Martin. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak.